Hello and good day. Welcome to Lesson 5 of Fundamentals of Freedom, Processing Knowledge. I'm, uh, I'm your humble sensei in freedom, Robert Arthur of the Menard family. Welcome and thank you. Uh, before I start this lesson, I'd like, to, I'd like to give a big thank you to all, everyone who's made donations and sent me uh, emails and have paid it forward. Uh, it's very humbling and uh, it makes me feel very hopeful also that uh, these lessons are doing good and are being appreciated, although I do seem to have a couple of detac detractors, a couple of whom I'm going to be using in my lesson today. Now, this whole free man thing, the free man on the land movement, you're going to be involved, you're going to be facing situations where you are going to have to process information or knowledge and you're going to have to increase your level of knowledge. And this means you are facing, you could face two fundamental uh, problems, dangers. And I'll be introducing you to uh, some people who have, have found those dangers. The problem with this whole situation is you have to increase your level of information and you have to increase your ability to process it. Otherwise, you lose balance. And when you start losing that balance, one of two things are going to happen. If along your journey, let's say this will represent information, and this represents your ability to process it. If your information gets too high and it outstrips your ability to process, you end up being imbalanced. And the world, if you're a ball on that, the world will end up seeming uh, quite mystical to you. It'll seem like a magical place where aliens and demons and uh, magical creatures are going to seem like a possibility because you will have information, but you won't have the ability to process it. And therefore, that information simply won't be properly processed. People who follow this route... Uh, they end up being highly religious. They end up being like super freaks, super religious freaks. Their ability to process information has not kept up with the information that has come to them. Now bear in mind, I am not making fun of those who are divine. I remember uh, one of the quotes, I believe, of Emily Dickinson. It goes like this. Much madness is divine sense to a discerning eye. What I believe when people get unbalanced in this nature, maybe there are spirits who do talk to them, who do give them information, but if they also don't give them the power to process the information given, they end up seeming like crazy folk. Now the other problem, if you go the other way, if you have your information level here, and processability here and your information stays low but your ability to process it goes up high again you end up with a great big bad imbalance and these people because they are denied information but they have the ability to process information and they know the information is out there they end up being conspiracy theorists And if you suffer from a pos position where you lack information but ability to process it and you know you are being denied information, you will end up being uh, thinking the whole world is a giant conspiracy. The trick, of course, is to increase both and do it so that you don't lose balance, so that you do increase your ability to, uh, you increase your knowledge as you increase your ability to process that knowledge. If you fail to do this, you're going to end up falling into the conspiracy trap or the holy roller trap. But either way, you're not going to find the peace and abundance and balance that, or, that you really want. And I think the balance is where the peace and abundance comes from. 
the whole free man movement, it's not about the world being a conspiracy. We know there's, there's greedy people out there who want stuff they shouldn't have. We know they, they use deception. But that doesn't mean the whole world is a conspiracy and there's aliens. We know and believe that there's some form of higher place, that, that there is a spiritual connection between us. But that doesn't mean that people who don't read the same Bible as you are evil. I'll introduce you to a guy, I'm sure he wouldn't mind, uh, who falls into this category where his information far outstrips his ability to process it or share it. And he thinks I'm an evil snake. Who, and it's his job to stop me. Because they haven't got a valid oath. None of the judges have valid oaths. None of the lawyers for the Department of Justice have valid oaths. None of the lawyers that have written legislation since 1955 have valid oaths. So you can see how uncomfortable it is to expose this national fraud that is, of course, against Her Majesty's ability to perform the functions of her calling, because that's the whole intent of this, is to keep Her Majesty so she's in, not in a liable position. Here she is styled as defender of the Christian faith, and we have evidence of the grandest bait-and-switch plan of fraud ever to take place, where they utilize the Bible and the Queen to get their authority, and then they say they're honorable, and then they begin to add to God's law, take away from God's law, and intimidate men and women that wish to come out of the fraud and not wish to participate in the fraud. The Minister of Justice, I'm sure, is aware of this. She has been made aware. I have contacted her, and I'm hoping that she will pay heed to this message as well as the other ones that I've sent her. Alison Redford, if you happen to listen to this, I hope you're aware that you're supporting a whole league of lawyers that are acting in fraud with criminal intent to commit perjury and treason. Oh, what now, his basic premise boils down to this. The oaths that the judges and lawyers make are of the form, I swear to, and then there's their oath, instead of I do swear, which is what he believes it should contain. Is he right? that because that word is not there, that it's a false oath. Now, he's got the, the knowledge, the information that the word do is not there. Fair enough, I'll grant that. Whether or not it's important is up, uh, that's debatable at least. Now, here's where the imbalance uh, causes these personality faults and, and the, the problem that you're about to see. Another lawyer, a James Odishaw, uh, and bringing in a fraud before the court. Now, this judge has been made aware of the fraud. She got a letter that Mr. Odishaw never replied to. She even uh, uh, reprimanded Mr. Odishaw for not replying to the letter. Well, the reason Mr. Odishaw did not reply to the letter is because he, would, he had no way to disprove any of the points. The points in there is he's got a false oath and he's running a fraud. And yet after seeing this, this woman acting as a judge, and I'm speaking as a private woman here, I would never intimidate a judge. No, he would never intimidate a judge. But he later goes on to acknowledge her as a private woman and imply that he was willing to intimidate her. This, this is what I don't like. I don't like people who use the, the teachings of the Prince of Peace in order to generate and justify such conflict. You want to know how I looked at the whole false oath? Because Robin Belanger, he came at me and he was like, look at this, you have to look at this. So I looked at it. I didn't really see the importance. Uh, I did a bit of investigation into it. I spoke to some people and the conclusion I came to was that it was still a valid oath if the person had the intent to make the valid oath. Even if you put the word do in there, it still wouldn't be valid if they didn't want it to be. And from the perspective of the English language alone, saying I swear turns the word swear into the verb instead of using the do swear, I do swear, which would merely be a, used, I believe, as an adverb if uh, the English professor I spoke to, if I'm recalling correctly. So it's still, you still have the action word there. He didn't like the fact that I didn't run with this. Now, I don't claim to know everything. Certainly removing one word in that fashion is the kind of thing that deceivers do, so I don't discount it. But I didn't run with it. So because I didn't embrace it as fully and as uh, uh, emotionally as he, did, as he does and did, 
uh, I am suddenly labeled as an evil man for not doing that. And not only that, but I am embracing this false oath and apparently trying to stop it from coming to the public's attention. Now, there, there was a, a, a YouTube video, and this morning I engaged in a little uh, back and forth play with uh, Minister Belanger concerning this whole issue. And I'll show you how he is going to justify the information he has, fail to look at his uh, lack of ability to process that information, and the result is going to be an imbalance where uh, I'm labeled as a snake. And this is how, this is the big problem about that imbalance where your knowledge uh, outweighs your processing ability. You end up labeling people, you're, you're Jesus-like and they're all sinners. Now this is where he starts equating me with a snake, saying that uh, we're, I'm a Pied Piper, and he starts quoting the Bible, which is what he does. So I started, I let him know that here he is thumping his Bible. And then I poked him a little bit, because we were trying to use logic and reason, and he had to abandon that in order to thump his Bible and take refuge there. At this point, he started referring to the fact that I have an ego, which I do, but I'm pretty cool, so I deserve it. And he makes mention that I'm a snake. Now, as I said, I don't diss the Bible, but I do uh, diss those who would label me a snake merely because I don't share their interpretation. Now, just to set the record straight, I have found much remedy in the teachings of Christ. I believe very strongly that this man knew the law and that his teachings bring much remedy. I have also found much remedy in refusing to believe that anyone else is more empowered than myself to interpret those, or that their interpretation should be uh, shackles upon me. I don't accept that at all. And certainly I don't accept people who call themselves minister and then use the words and the teachings of the Prince of Peace to invite dispute and conflict, which is exactly what he has done. Now, it's, I kind of play with people like this. I got to admit, I'm kind of poking the dog. But his lack of logic and lack of reason is, to me, a little bit funny, although it's, it's useful for demonstrating that having the information but lacking the ability to process that information makes it very easy for him to label me as a snake merely because I'm not sharing his information as he would like me to. You'll notice with people like this that they will never have opinions. There's never his opinion. It's always fact. It's always a provable fact, never an opinion, because his opinion is always fact. And because he can't process information properly, he can't distinguish between his own opinions and facts. And therefore, the moment he holds an opinion, it becomes a fact. And you questioning that opinion means you're rejecting a fact in his book. And since you're rejecting a fact, you're an evil man. This is how the mindset works when you have information, but you lack ability to process it. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't believe he's a bad man, and I don't want to be dissing him. I think he's a bit of a wing nut. He smoked way too much pot. And uh, although he has done a lot of digging into certain bodies of words, I don't see how he has stretched his mind into developing a, a greater degree to process information. And that's really led him astray. My honest belief is that everyone does the best they can with the information they have available, coupled with their ability to process it. I don't think that makes me a snake. And I don't think that his inability to process information properly uh, means that he's an evil man either and I'm trying not to laugh at the guy but the idea that uh, that someone is evil because they don't share your opinion concerning something like that is to me pretty distressing now the other problem comes as I said earlier when People have, or people have 
a little bit of information, but not enough to, uh, to keep up with their ability to process information. What happens then? You end up with people who focus on the lack of information. And it is that lack of information which starts to give rise to an imbalance, where in order to fill that void, they will come up with ludicrous things. It reminds me of a little joke that I was working on, where I'm, in a, I'm at the racetrack, and I'm just sitting minding my business, and I'm meditating quietly, my eyes are closed, and I hear the sound of hoofbeats, and a guy's talking loudly, and I thought to myself, hmm, that must be a leprechaun on a unicorn. And therefore, and so I looked and I opened my eyes, and the unicorn, it was a unicorn and a leprechaun, I was sure of it. However, the unicorn had used its magical powers to shift their, their physical form so that it just looked like a racehorse and a jockey. But I knew it was a unicorn and a, and a leprechaun, because leprechauns don't use cell phones. See that circular logic? That's the kind of thing people who don't have enough information will rely upon. And they will use, they will use logic like that in order to try to fill the void. A lot of this can be fixed. Whether or not your imbalance is a result of not having enough information or having more than your ability to process it. You work on one and then the other. To increase your knowledge, dig at these words. Uh, dig at them, get a, a dictionary, deconstruct these words, and increase your knowledge. Do some study. But as you do this, you must ensure that at the same time, you are increasing your ability to, to process the information you uncover. That's where using the LSATs comes into play. It's very important to do that. That's where it's important to create a group of people, which is what, you know, the other, the soup, serving soup is about, so that you can, in fact, uh, when you come to these places where you have information and you have trouble processing it, you have a group of people you can process it with. You can develop and grow these abilities. If you don't, you end up starting to think that the whole world is a bunch of evil snakes, or that uh, they're conspiracy theorists, reptilians, who want to take over the world. Chances are, it's none of those. It's probably something much simpler. It's greed and stupidity. And it's people simply being lazy more than, than evil. So if you find yourself at a point of imbalance, examine what the problem is. Do you have more information than you do ability to process it? Then put down that information, go increase your ability to process information, and come back to it. If you are lacking the information and you're starting to look at the world, not as just a bunch of greedy, stupid people trying to do their best with their information and ability to process it, if you, if you think it's all about uh, Illuminati and the Jesuits, and uh, Jewish bankers and reptilians and aliens, then I think you need to do a little bit of digging and you need to uncover more information. By doing these two things simultaneously, you can avoid falling into either of the traps where you become a Bible-thumping holy roller who labels people as snakes and evil imposters, and you can also avoid, avoid uh, the trap of thinking that there's so little hope that you have to start thinking of the world as populated by reptilians who want to eat your brain. Remedy is somewhere in between. Now our second example, I'm going to be using a guy who's been trolling me essentially on the internet, David Merrill Van Pelt. Those of you who are familiar with the forums there, uh, this might be old news to you. I'm using it as a teaching example. I'm hopeful that you guys don't think I'm using uh, uh, this, these lessons as a means of uh, personal retribution against these people. But I think they, they prove to be valuable examples of what can happen when you lose balance. Now in David's case, he came onto the forum and he, 
from what I know about David, uh, A, I label him as a government agent. I don't know that he is. Uh, but if someone, if someone starts putting gas in your, in your or, or sugar in your gas tank, it's easy to believe that they're acting in a malicious and vexatious manner. And it's so easy to destroy when you compare it to what's necessary to create. It might take a team of engineers years to design a, a vehicle, a, a, an automobile, a work of art that an idiot with a cup of sugar can destroy in seconds. Destruction is easy. Creation, that's the challenge. So I'm, I'm minding my business in the form. He comes in and he has, again, information very similar to the first situation where he had information he felt was vitally important to the whole freedom movement. And he insisted that I be the one who bring it forth to the public instead of him doing it himself. And he came out with a thread which I f thought was very pokey and disrespectful and totally unnecessary entitled uh, Wake Up Call for Rob Menard. So by the title alone you can pretty much tell it's not a very nice thread. And he acknowledged that he was, uh, what was the word, badgering, that he was badgering me. Now my response, imagine it like this. The way I see it, he has knowledge and he's apparently a fairly intelligent man, but it's how, but he's lacking a key piece of knowledge. So his ability to process, we'll put up there, we'll give him as he's as intelligent as anyone I know. Now his ability to, to bring the information, or the information itself, part of the information must be the ability to bring it. If you don't have that, you end up with, a, with an imbalance where the dish you're trying to bring falls off and you end up creating a conspiracy pool where people start thinking that you might be an agent merely because of the effect. Now, if you go to a restaurant and you order a bowl of soup, imagine you order a bowl of soup, the waiter goes, gets a bowl of soup, comes back, and just before they deliver it, they spit in it. Spit. And you say, I don't want that. So the waiter takes the bowl of soup, backs to the kitchen and says, the guy doesn't like your cooking. He rejected the soup, he doesn't like your cooking. See, it's not the soup, it's not the information that he was trying to bring. It was the way in which he tried to present it. And he lacked the knowledge on how to present that information properly. And that resulted in... Well, the whole Think Free Forum uh, pretty much bit the dust because he came in there generating conflict because he wanted the information he had presented. What was it? Uh, it goes back to something that he read uh, years ago, stuff that was written a hundred years ago by dead people. And my basic position is, if the words of dead people written a hundred years ago have such force, imagine what yours must have. But people who uh, study the words of old and find power teaching those words of old don't like it when I teach you that your words are just as powerful. Okay, so now for a couple of a few lessons. One, I'm hopeful that neither Robin nor uh, uh, Meryl Van Peltler are going to be upset with me using them as examples in this lesson. So I would ask that you do this. Robin. Pray that he, he finds some, some balance, that he develops a better ability to process knowledge, and learn to distinguish between things which are merely his opinions and outright facts. Pray for him. He needs it. And for David, well, send him some love. And, uh, maybe some positive intentions that he might be able to develop an ability to actually serve his knowledge without spitting all over the people he intends to serve it to. It might make his knowledge much more palpable to people if he wasn't spitting in the dish as he brought it. So those are just two assignments. Then, of course, do this for my videos, please, and go right to the start. If this is like the end of the video, do this for the start of the video, and then that way uh, people are more likely to click on that one 
and start there instead of coming to the last one first, which is what seems to be happening. Uh, and for other assignments, this is for like homework kind of thing. Y you need to increase knowledge, but you also need to increase your ability to process it. Earlier assignments and homework was doing LSATs. What I'd like you to do is to do LSATs in a group. A group of three people, two or three people, I guess. You've you used the tools of the internet available to you. But do some LSATs so that you can increase your ability to process information. And it's not just you doing it. You're going to do it with a group so that you can process information as a group as well. Uh, and then what I would like you to do is learn to increase your knowledge by doing legal research or uh, any sort of reading along that lines. I liken it very much to uh, being a scuba diver who has to go down, dig down, and uh, come up with some pearls. Sometimes you come up with petrified whale shit. And it's hard to tell when you're down there. So what I'd like you to do is increase your knowledge of any new subject. Pick a subject of which you have no previous knowledge and increase that knowledge in one hour. Just spend one hour, increase your knowledge on any subject, provided it's a subject that you have no previous knowledge. It could be a foreign language, uh, anything really. You get to choose your assignments in this case. So that's what your assignments are. LSATs together to learn to process information better and within a group and one hour on a new topic of subject, a new subject of which you had no previous uh, uh, understanding or knowledge and increase your knowledge. Just spend an hour. It's one little hour. And finally, feel free to donate if you're appreciating these lessons and I certainly appreciate all the people who have donated already. Someone donated six bucks, almost made me cry, really touched me. Learn to process information as a group, in a group setting, and learn that new topics should not generate fear, and don't be intimidated by new topics. That's the function of these two assignments. Hopefully you guys who are out there what I'd like to do, and uh, I'd need your permission to do this, the people who have donated, I have your emails. What I'd like to do is put you all in the loop and uh, send everyone's emails to each other so that you can communicate with each other. Uh, I'm not going to do that without your permission, of course. So if, you, if you're okay with me doing that, uh, send me a note. Let me know. And as always, have fun with this.